So old Jim Crow Joe, you know, he, he's back in the news again uh, because, you know, you remember when, when he was running for office, he said that he wasn't like Trump at all. And that, you know, when he, if he gets in office, you're not going to have people, you know, him being, you know, mean to the media and you had to worry about mean tweets and all the different things that he said. And then when he finally got in office, you notice he was acting no different than Trump with the media. I said, Hmm, I thought he was supposed to be different. But the reason why I'm talking about this is that he was asked a question about inflation, um, at a meeting and they caught him like on hot mic. Um, responding to this reporter and what he says to the reporter. Now for me, it's not really what he says, but we will, I, I want to ask another question after you hear this, but let me, let me go ahead and roll this short clip and let's get to that question. I really want to get to. That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. Right. So that was Jim Crow Joe. Like I said, and that, that's what he had to say. Now he, he said that in a response to a question about inflation, inflation is affecting everybody, everybody, including me, you, etc. So why wouldn't you want that question to answer to, you know, from the president? Hey, when inflation going to come down, I mean, this is kind of bad. But his response was stupid SOB. Now, if he says this to his own, okay, by, by behind a simple question about something that he should be able to try to fix, what do he say about us behind closed doors? What have he said about us asking for something and they actually did have the mic turned off? I mean, if this is the way he responded to his own people about inflation, Imagine how he's responding behind the scenes when he hear black people talking about they need a, 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 a police reform and would end a, a qualified immunity. Imagine what he's saying then. Imagine what he's saying about reparations behind the scenes that you haven't heard. You understand this? This, this is how I start thinking. I start thinking what, what you're saying behind the scenes. You see what I'm saying? And what you're saying behind the scenes is going to translate to your actions in public. Now in public, he go he go you know run game. He gonna try to finesse you. He gonna, you know, you never know. Shoot, he probably told Justice Breyer to say, "Hey, you know, you, you want to retire because because I I really need some help. I mean, listen, I, I told them I put a black woman in there. I, I get them off my back a little bit. If I put a black woman on the Supreme Court, I could tell them, see, I had your back. I put a black woman. This is history X Y Z. I already seen people in our last podcast, and I'm like, oh, the finesse is about to happen." I seen people saying, don't be hating on the black woman. You know, this is hating on the black woman. I say, oh my God. Now it could be Democrat shields as that, you know, of course, cause you understand the shields do come to our, our channels and, and they do leave comments. So I, I'm not talking about the, the majority of you who's listening would even leave a comment like that because you get it. Cause you understand that black women and black men as a people aren't getting anything. And you understand symbolism and tokenism. You understand that as well because you are the smart people. And I know that I know how, how smart and intelligent a lot of you are, but you know, unfortunately a lot of people who come by is not on your level so that you can tell what the comments they leave. Right? So imagine what he's really saying about, about all of us. Imagine what he's saying about the, the new black media itself. You know, everybody who's part of that, right? Imagine what he's saying about that. You think he don't know who all of us are. He knows, he knows exactly who all of us are, but the, the key is, and the strategy is don't give them any kind of attention. Don't mention them, um, at all. You know, we got, we hear what they are saying. We address what they are saying in the mainstream, but we are never going to acknowledge them whatsoever. Um, until we have no choice, but to acknowledge them, you understand? Because they, they don't want to, um, a Tasha K situation. And what I mean by a Tasha K situation is that they don't even want us to be become even infamous. You understand? Um, and the reason why I mentioned Tasha K, which I'll talk about that on my entertainment channel just more extensively is that ever since the situation with, with her and Cardi, um, 
not everybody's mentioning Tasha on major platforms. Everybody on YouTube is talking about Tasha right now. Right? So if you really look at it from Tasha's standpoint, she lost in one instance, but she won, she won action majorly in another. If you really care about being infamous, you understand? And they understand that they, they say, listen, if we mention them, we're going to start legitimizing them and whatever they say is going to stick. So no, we don't want to mention them unless we just kind of have to, but his response, you know, to this reporter from Fox news is very telling you know, for me, but it actually makes sense because you remember when he had talked to the civil rights, uh, shields, bootlegs, and the way he talked to them, he talked to them very aggressively. He talked to them like, like he, he was, you know, how dare y'all come over here and ask me for anything and tell you, you got to work with the Hispanics. Say, well, what are you bringing up Hispanic people for? They have nothing to do with this conversation. Why? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying it's this is because it's what they say about us behind the scenes. You understand one thing about black folks, black folks are supposed to ask for nothing at all. You should just be happy. You should be happy that, that you can even go and cast a vote, but don't ask for anything. No. So this guy, like I said to me, and I've told you people before, we say, Oh, you get Trump out. He's no, he's actually, he's worse than Trump because at least Trump is up front with you. You know, Trump is pretty upfront. What do he say about a whole lot of things about him being on telegram? I, I read what Trump say every day on telegram by him being on telegram, you know, saying what he want to say, uh, on telegram and not worry about getting his, his account banned. Cause I don't even think you can even report somebody on telegram, which is good. People should be able to say what they want to say. You know, I mean, as long as you ain't threatening people, you know, it is what it is, but Trump is an open book. He say all the crap that he wants to say on telegram all the time. I read it. I follow him. But this dude here, you know, this is what he's saying behind the scenes. I can imagine. I, I trust me. I can imagine some of them conversations. Do you remember there was a, they talked about a conversation between Biden and Manchin, Joe Manchin and Kamala was in the room and, and he, and he told Kamala, you know, okay, well I, I want to have a conversation with him in private. Why Kamala couldn't listen to that conversation. She's a vice president. I keep bringing that up because what are you saying about black people? that Kamala can't even hear. You understand that? That's my thing. Like what, what, what are you going to say that she can't, she wouldn't want to know about her being a vice president of the United States. And he purposely leaves her out of the loop. But yeah, yeah. J Jim Crow Joe, man, he, he is, um, we, we, we see what he got going on. And, and this is why black folks have, have thoroughly rejected him. Now, this is why the black, black people are going to break the Democrat party. Uh, completely. And this is why a lot of black folks say, I ain't worrying about none of them. I'm going to let them have it because I ain't getting nothing out of the deal. And you dog on right. I'm going to tell black people that you finally starting to respect yourself. Finally, finally going to respect yourself because when you sit up here and give everybody else, um, a bag because off of your vote, when you giving everybody else opportunity, everybody can leave their country and come over here and, and get opportunity over you. And you've been here. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, you know, it's because of you, your votes, your votes, put these Democrat politicians in office for them to sign off on all of that. You know, when Republicans are in office, they, they ain't playing. They are not playing with, with, with nobody just coming over here, doing whatever they want to do. Hell Republicans won't want to, uh, uh, amend the 14th amendment in which, which the 14th amendment is basically saying, if you're born on American soil, you're American citizen. Republicans want to amend that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, uh, 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 the reason why they want to amend it because they are saying that, wait a minute, you can't just come over here from a foreign country and just have your baby here. And automatically your, your baby now is considered an anchor baby. You're anchored here in America. Now, you know, that's why, and, and you know, they got people that do that. I, I, I covered a story about this, um, out of LA about the Chinese was doing that. They will fly their women over here. They'll pay about $40,000 and they'll stand in these like high end condos. And they had like, these medical facilities and these high end condos with doctors and everything. And then they would have their babies here. And this is how they would get anchored into America too. You know, cause it's a lot of Chinese, you know, people talk about the Hispanics. No, it's a lot of Chinese coming here too. And they come in here by in, in the droves, how they come in here and they, and they having the anchor babies. And what happens is when you have your anchor baby, then this is how you get the parents in. You understand what I'm saying? So this is why the Republicans want to change the 14th amendment right there. Um, 
And at this point in the game, you know, some, some folks are like, oh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because the 14th amendment, you know, was for us 13, 14 and 15 amendment was for us. And everybody else is using it to get anchored into America, but they didn't fight for America. They didn't fight in the civil war. They didn't do anything. They didn't suffer. We suffered they didn't suffer the dogs and the bull Connors and the, and the clan. And they didn't suffer anything like we suffered yet. They can just slide on in and get the benefit and then turn around and say, why are you black Americans uh, 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 lazy? You know, you black Americans been here forever. I've been here three years and I got everything and you've been here for 500 years and you ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's what they'll turn around and tell you, but you know, they, they will have no appreciation or whatever else or why they got here, you know? So Biden, that that's his, his particular thing that he wants to do. He wants to bring everybody else in and black Americans are starting to pay attention to it and say, no, nah, that strategy is done. We're done with that. We, we, we're not. No, 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 no. I say people had their chance to, to partner with black America. People had their chance to, um, work with us. People had their chance to, um, uh, claim all the Africanness they wanted to claim, you know, cause when you're trying to get a bag, you African, all of a sudden you black too. You know, you got this lineage, your black grandma, everybody black boy, when they trying to get something, you get something and you're like, Shh, black, what? Where's Addy? You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, Biden and his group here, you know, Democrat party, you know, for sure. Um, they're saying all kind of nasty things behind the scenes. Trust me. So that's why I want to uh, cover this. Like I said, this is what this guy said on, on hot mic. I can imagine all kind of uh, N words, Negroes and everything else they're saying about us behind the scenes. And I, it'd be nice if somebody just put out a tape one day of them saying something. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. But shoot, you know, they got so much protections around them people. You, you can't do it unless they say it on the hot mic, but you know, let me know what y'all think about your boy, uh, Jim Crow Joe, you know, like I say, he cussing folks out, uh, when they ask him about, you know, inflation, you know, that's for sure. And, and definitely, you know, I want to thank you, you know, ladies and gentlemen for coming on the podcast this morning. Uh, make sure you subscribe, make sure you subscribe. We, we thank you for subscribing ahead of time, um, and, and clicking the like button. And also, like I said, you can donate to, you know, a fundraiser for the, for the channel as well. We appreciate that. Um, all the people that have donated so far and the people that will donate in the future, we greatly appreciate that. Um, you don't know how much that means to us. Like I said, we don't have corporate sponsors, so we can only be, um, helped out by the people. That's for sure. So thank you for listening and see you next time.